Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Serpent. And if you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, so a very, 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 very important week. As we know, it is an important, important time. And it is an important time because at the end of the day, you know, the bull run is not going to wait for anybody, right? So there's going to be a certain window where Bitcoin will go to a certain price, then Ethereum, then all the old coins, right? And so what's really important is that today I'm going to cover off what needs to happen at all cost in order to ensure that XRP does not miss the bull run. And it's important. Now, from a technical perspective, with or without the SEC approval, XRP will break the previous all-time high. But how much will be dependent on the SEC case settling? And at the end of the day, I want to make very, very clear to, to the listeners of the channel that I am pro XRP. I believe in XRP. I believe in the the vision, the mission, the biggest scope. It does solve the world's biggest problem about instant liquidity. It is amazing, but make no mistake about it. The second that I think that you as an XRP holder have the potential risk of missing out on the bull run, I'll be the first one to tell you. Literally, I'm in it with you, right? So I'm not emotionally attached to XRP. I'm attached to you guys getting results and seeing value. Now, there is an amazing opportunity with XRP. You see it, I see it. The more you research, the more you understand this particular cryptocurrency, it is phenomenal, right? The instant liquidity, all the things that are coming for it. But we also are investors. And at the end of the day, we need to make sure that it does tick all our boxes. Now, as far as getting to 420 by the end of the month, from a technical perspective, the volume coming in and kicking in, yes. But you and I are not in XRP just for, you know, $3.80 or $4.20 to come by. We're in it for the bigger picture, right? The double digits. So I'll cover that off and what needs to happen and what sort of dates are, are set in my mind as warning signs if we don't start to see things move. Because at the end of the day, we're investors, right? Like, I mean, that's why we do this. We don't watch YouTube videos for the fun of it. I mean, at least I hope you don't watch it just for the fun of it. You know, it's to better your future and better the, the future of your family and, and people around you. So I wanted to make that very, very, very clear. Now, towards an era of cross-border CBDCs, right? So fast and affordable cross-border payment networks are essential for the digital economy sustainable growth. This is the big topic. This is the main reason why we're all in it, right? It's the instant liquidity aspect of XRP Ripple and the problem that is around at the moment and the solution, which is way faster, way cheaper and better for everyone everybody involved, which we're talking millions and millions and millions and millions um, of um, millions and millions and millions of um, transactions that occur around the world every single day. And and ultimately, this is one of the key reasons why we are XRP holders, right? It's the instant liquidity aspect. Now, from a breakout sentiment and from a metrics perspective, right? So crypto market intelligence platform sentiment is looking at key on-chain metrics for XRP that are flashing healthy signals for the six largest digital assets in the, in the world. What it's saying is that there are some strong indications that volume is coming and that there is going to be a move happening for the price. And that there is really, really, really important, right? Because again, as XRP holders, we want to see this move, right? Now, I do believe that the next stop and the next move that is coming is coming towards that $1.50. So we have a good chance of hitting $1.50 and moving forward from there. So getting to $1.50 and then continuing to push forward and push forward it will. And there is a lot going on at the moment, of course, with, with you know the Ripple versus the SEC. And we are anxiously waiting for this news about whether the, you know, the discovery period is being extended or not. So there's a lot of question marks out there at the moment, right? And, and I feel your pain. I personally have trained myself to become emotionless. Whether the market is up or down does not bother me because I know what I hold. But today is particularly different because I know that there is a lot of you questioning whether you hold XRP or not. 
Now, I will be holding XRP. So, just want to be clear again about what I'm saying. I will be holding XRP. Whether it takes October, November, December, January, February, March, April, June next year to break the previous all-time high, I will be holding. I understand the value of it. I'm not selling a cent of it. However, my responsibility as the serpent is also to give you if there is a sign that you might need to wait until March for this to break its previous all-time high, I need to tell you. Because at the end of the day, it's your portfolio on the line. Now, do I think that any of this is going to happen? Absolutely not. I think we're going to smash through, get to 420, break into double digits, settle with the SEC, um, announce ETF, and then fly straight to triple figures. That is the plan. But if the plan changes and something goes on, I will be the first one to tell you. Now, there is a strong suggestion that a XRP ETF in the US is coming. In order for that to happen, then that's, the case needs to be settled. Like, that has to be. And on top of that, Ripple will be going for IPO. So there's a lot coming. There is so, so much coming. So much coming for, uh, for XRP. But again, there are some critical dates which we'll go over. Now, Ripple CEO comments on prospects of XRP ETF in the US. And, you know, he's been, you know, in the media. And yes, there are go it, it, there is going to be one. It's just going to take a little bit of time, you know, before before we see it come through to fruition. Now, Ripple CEO calls Gensler and Clayton's meeting before XRP lawsuit bad optics. And he's been quite vocal again in the media in the last couple of days about all this. And it's it's really, really, um, really, really interesting, you know, from, from, from this aspect. And I think, you know, um, Brad Gallinghouse is phenomenal on in the media, under pressure, whenever they ask him hard questions, he's really, really, really good with this stuff. And the interview with Fox Business, go check it out, go have a look. We're not going to play two minutes uh, of, uh, of a video that you can go check out, but do check out him talking with Fox Business. It was very, very, very good. And um, he, he was asked a whole bunch of questions on there and he answered them brilliantly. Now, from a technical perspective, when we look at today and some of the things that are going on, right? So we got support levels, you know, at $1.7, pivot levels at $1.8, first major resistance levels at $1.10, which we are sort of hovering, uh, well, we're almost there right now at the time of making this. And then we have obviously the 62% uh, Fib retracement levels at $1.40. And we'll cover that off today. Now, this gets me excited, right? So this head and shoulders pattern gets me very, very, very excited. It is extremely bullish. And I think from, um, from, from again, from a chart's perspective, it, we are set you know, to break that previous all-time high. Now, I like what XRP Captain 590 has done here. On the weekly, the RSI is ready. It is ready to move and to really begin to make some serious, serious noise. Look at that consolidation period on the RSI on the weekly and look at that volume that is, you know, like in previous times, how big that is compared to how much we are right now. So there's a lot of volume to come. A lot, a lot, a lot of volume. Now, when we look at the two hour, uh, in, in on a two hour time frame, this is versus the euro. You can see that if we are trending in this particular way, then you know, a matter of what 12, 24, 48 hours before there has to be a decision up or down. And of course, based on everything that we know so far, it will be up and it will be up by a lot that we're going to go. Let's jump into a tiny though. Let's have a look at some indicators. As we begin to look at the charts, obviously today there was some question marks around whether Bitcoin was going to go up or down, whether it was going to go back down to 57,000. You know, some people were saying that. Well, it has tried to break its previous all-time high. It hasn't quite got there yet, but there has been a massive amount of volume that has come through from the new ETF that has, that has come about. And so I do expect in the coming days that, you know, we will break the previous uh, um, all-time highs. Now, from a volume perspective and from an XRP perspective on the daily, we can see that the daily MACD has moved into a bearish segment. Only slightly, but it is bearish at the moment. When we look at the RSI, it's sort of sitting around the middle. Let's have a look in the hourly. And when we look at the hourly, you know, the hour, you know, it was sitting at around $1.07. It's jumped all the way up to $1.10. And so right now, it's sort of probably going to go back down to about $1.08 or so. So from an hourly perspective, the MACD looks healthy because obviously there's been volume that has come through. On the four hour, it's turned bullish. 
And then when we go on to the 12 hour, the 12 hour, there's still quite a gap, but sitting well above the moving average 100, right? It has not broken down from the moving average 100. And that in itself is very, very, very good news from a technical perspective. So what are we waiting for? Same thing we've been waiting for for the last couple of days. It's like watching paint dry. And I had a friend of mine, a very, very, very good friend of mine saying, yeah, it is like watching paint dry, but what coat are we on? And let me say, let's just say we've been painting for a while. We're just sitting here watching this beautiful mural, watching it dry. And my God, it is frustrating. I do feel your frustration. And I wanted to make sure that today, out of all days, that you knew that from me. And I obviously appreciate that just because I have become emotionless to, to you know, to trading and, and to um, the portfolio and no matter what it is, I know what I hold and, I, and I'm very firm on that. It doesn't mean that you are. And I don't like when people are too positive to the point where they, where they sound ludicrous because at the end of the day, I'm a serpent, right? We've, we've watched together, we've grown together, you know, from February till now and it's not a one-sided thing. Like my mind is always thinking of every single possible scenario. And I am bullish on this. And I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely uh, believe that we are gonna hit every single target that we've been talking about on this channel. But I also wanted you guys to know that I don't wake up and just live in a fairy tale, la la land, rainbow world. I look at every indicator, every channel, every possible bit of news to make sure that you and I win. At the end of the day, I want you to win and that is for me is number one priority so i will be telling you that i am going to hold xrp token no matter what myself personally but if i do think that you potentially have the potential of missing out on the bull run because you're holding an xrp token i'll be the first one to tell you about it and there will be full transparency from my end around around it as well and if you guys want to see that i still hold the token you'll be i'll be more than happy to show you that I still hold a token. And and to be fair, if the token went down to 20 cents tomorrow, I would buy a big bag of it. That's how much I believe that, you know, we are holding something very, very, very valuable, but I do not want you to miss out on the bull run. That would not be cool at all. Let's have a look at some drawings. So once we do get volume, right, the next steps that we need to go are for are, are towards that 124 and towards 141. Very, very important steps. And this is where, from a timeline perspective, right, we need to start to see momentum shift. We need to start to see volume um, kick in because November and December are going to be monstrous in the crypto space. But January, once the other ETFs go through, is going to be even more insane. So this is where it's really, really important that now these next 10 to 11 days of this month left, plus the first week of November, we need to see momentum shift happen, right? It's very 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 important now as we break out of here like as we break out of this like this is on the weekly right we are right at the cusp of it if you can see it it is absolutely right there it's right there on the weekly right so it is showtime that's why i'm excited about 420 because on the weekly we are about to finish this and when this finishes it will be monster candles up or down now if it were to go down it would go down to about 47 cents which ain't gonna happen i think this will be the catapult that takes us over towards the 420 mark there's a specific reason why i said you know the end of october like i said i don't wake up in the morning and think oh well i'm just gonna tell them that end of october it is that this is the main reason why i think these next two weeks are going to be legendary in the in from a technical perspective Forget about the news. Technicals don't lie. And check this out. It is at the end. A decision has to be made. We go up or we go down. And I think we're going to go up. We're going to get that 420. Then moving forward, we're going to go towards double digits. And there is a very strong possibility of gain, gaining momentum to the point where we get to about $16, $17 there. Then from that, an SEC case settlement major news coming through and then we start to hit triple digits so i want to be very very clear with you today the targets for now 119 126 and 139 once we break and, and get this volume kicking in on the weekly chart i see so much potential right 286 to 320 percent increase 423 to 450 
That is where we're heading. I could be wrong by a week. I could. I could be wrong by a week. But when we go back to this, I don't know. 420 to 423 is looking very, very juicy. Not to mention the momentum shift that will be coming through from the um, FOMO from everyone else uh, kicking in as well. So that there is very, very, very important. But for now, 122, 130, 140 are very important uh, actions that we need to look forward to. But 420, I, I can just feel it, feel it, that it's coming our way. If you learned something new today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. As always, thank you, and I look forward to see you on the other one.